How you doing guys and gals? This is Doug Wilson from Yellow Hulk Custom Outdoors. Another client offering video. I want to try to start adding at least one cool Kydex tip. You know, Kydex sheath system tip or something you need to know per video. Uh, but first, I want to show you this. This is a t-shirt that was given to me by my buddy Jason Black of Strange Galaxy. They're on Facebook. Pretty cool. And basically what Strange Galaxy is, it's uh, videography and photography services. Uh, Jason's got all that neat camera stuff and takes, you know, nature photos and photos of, you know, like Mount Adams out, out west and, you know, all kinds of neat photographic and videography stuff so if you're interested check him out on Facebook strange galaxy I know he sells these t-shirts as well he also sells um, these lanyards with the skulls on them which are pretty cool for you know your knife handles or whatever okay he sent me some of those too okay thanks Jason I appreciate it I love that t-shirt, man. Those graphics are spot on. Jason used to do some uh, photography, photography for me, but since I can't really get my sheath systems out to him so he can take photographs of them, I just do it myself. Uh, so anyway, here's the tip of the week. You know, the Kydex tip of the week. If you're looking for... A custom kydex sheath no matter where you go the tip of the week is try to stick with solid colors for the main sheath and then I don't know if the maker will do another color for the uh, ferro rod uh, holder or the, the you know, your Altoid tin holder or whatever I do I can do it but I don't know if other makers do it but the reason why I say try to go for a solid color main sheath is because Kydex you know, comes in all different colors and patterns, but the 093 is what most of us use for a really tough sheath. The solid colors are a thicker 093 than, say, a Cryptek pattern in 093. Here's how it works. The guys that make the Kydex have parameters within which they work. And I'm always being told it can be this thickness to this thickness and still be considered 093. So it can actually be, you know, 0.085 and still be considered 0.093. So a lot of the pattern colors kind of flow on the thinner side. The, th the, uh, the solid colors seem to be thicker. Thicker than 093 in a lot of cases. That's why I say uh, when I post a particular sheath or whatever, I measure the Kydex. If it's 0 .097, I tell you that. This sheath is 0 .097 thickness Kydex, which is thicker than 093 which is the standard okay so the, the OD green the coyote brown the black I can get it thicker than 093 um, I, I, that would require me to let out a secret that I don't want to let out but I can get thicker than 093 so that that sheath is really tough in these in these solid colors now basically the solid colors are OD green coyote and black uh, sometimes chocolate brown but it seems those three those three are the thickest and then I try to guide clients to make that their main sheath and then whatever pattern you want I can do for the accessories the ferro rod holder <clears throat> the tabby dangler plate that kind of thing Okay, there's the tip of the week and, and it really is these are I can get them 
quite thicker than 093, but I, I, can, I never get the patterns that way. You know what I mean? I don't know why. It just is what it is. I think it's because when they put the patterns on, when they infuse the patterns, they have to press the Kydex, and it makes it thinner, you know, so they don't have to do that with the solid colors. Okay. Um, I, I was working on a, um, a leather loop for one of my tabby danglers. This here is a, an edge beveler. This goes back to my leather working days. I'm starting to get back into doing leather work. So I've already done some leather over Kydex sheaths. <clears throat> like this one. This one's going out to Mike Morgan. So this is full leather over full Kydex. I think I'm going to start making leather sheaths too, also. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I have the time for it. I'm going to do something though. Because I, I really enjoy working with leather. And this is how these bevelers work. Basically, I don't know if you can see this. These bevelers have to be maintained pretty sharp. And I have a, a good way of sharpening these things if anybody's interested. Any of the leather workers who are having problems sharpening their bevelers, I got a great way to do it. You probably know it anyway. I mean, if you're a leather worker, you probably know how to sharpen these. All right. But basically what they do is they take off the edge of the leather, the very edge of it, so you can bevel the edges and then either condition or burnish because what I'm going to do with this is after I'm done uh, taking all the uh, the edges down now this is a piece of um, 9 ounce veg tan hide which tools very well takes leather stamps very well I, I generally wet the leather a little bit <clears throat> make it damp so it accepts it better but you have to be careful because if you if you well I'm not even going to get into that if, if the maker of the leather sheath doesn't condition and wax the sheath if, if that leather gets wet some of that tooling can kind of wash out of it and relax a little bit I've seen the tooling almost disappear in some leathers because the client got the leather wet and ruined the tooling on it because the leather was not conditioned it wasn't waxed it, it could not repel water, so it soaked it up and <laughs> all the tooling came out of it. So anyway, I'm going to condition this one, then I'm going to oil it. Well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to dye it first. Uh, this one's probably going to be either black or a dark brown, and then I'm going to condition it. Then I'm going to wax it. Um, but before I wax it, I'm going to. Uh, Put some edge coat on here, make the edges nice and burnish them and whatnot, so that they're nice and good looking for clients. <clears throat> so that that's one of my that's one of my leather uh, tabby dangler loops uh, before it becomes an actual loop. This is the raw state. So I'm going to be working on that in a few minutes. Real quick, <clears throat> here we go. First first system. This one is for. Bob Valdez, Valdez. I want to say Valdez because it's an S, not a Z. If it was a Z, it would be Valdez, right? So I'm going to say Bob Valdez or Valds. Uh, 162 Benchmade Bushcrafter, the, the Cyber Bushcrafter. It's a nice knife. This is S30V, pretty sure. Yep. S30V, Super Steel. It's a. Uh, uh, considered stainless resists rust incredibly that's why a lot of guys like this knife <clears throat> it basically won't rust uh, front mount ferro rod you wanted a Sunto compass on it just basic tabby dangler this is black leather this, this leather, um, the edges are burnished and beveled and whatnot. This one is for Bob Silvario. Bob Silvario. 
he sent me his Jessmic and his JX4 bush bat. JX4 bush bat. This is uh, some type of micarta, looks like. Pretty micarta. I don't think that's wood. That's micarta. Nice looking knife. This one's got a great, great retention. Great retention. It doesn't need a combat lock. I mean, this thing is nice and tight. It, it clicks in there with authority. I mean, it's, it's in there. Okay, so let's go back to this one. Chessmick Sheath. Uh, I'm just going to show it to you. This is uh, Cryptek Nomad Infused Pattern Kydex. The infused patterns are the toughest. The printed on patterns, they can be scraped off. So I kind of try to guide people away from that. Got great retention. I mean, absolutely great retention. No rattle. You know, all that neat yellow hawk quality. A coyote brown tech lock in four different positions you can put it on in this on this sheath. Tabby dangler. This is wax impregnated. Well, oil, oil. It's oiled. Then I wax impregnate it, and then I burnish and buff the edges and whatnot. It's good, good hide, cow hide. This is nine ounce, veg tan hide, nice and durable. Bush bat. This is uh, this is the knife designed by Chris Tanner and. S. Wink. I don't know his first name. There it is. Neat little knife. Scandy grind. It's got that ring at the end there. You wanted a shore up plate, you know, a scallop plate on the front. Looks good, plus it shores up the sheath, makes it nice and strong uh, so that it doesn't bend or anything like that. Uh, you know, Kydex is already pretty tough. I usually use 093. Because I like them really tough. And another Coyote Brown tech lock. Uh, this one is for Tony Alvarez. Tony, this one's not finished yet. So, don't beat me up on the comments saying, Doug, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. It's not finished yet. I'm waiting on Santo Compasses to come in. But here it is so far. Now, I know you didn't ask for this. But I do it if I can. You know, I like to build some extra value into the sheath. I mean, you guys, my clients are important to me. You guys are important to me. I do this for you. I don't really do it so that I can go out in the bush and carry these things. I do it so you guys can and safely carry your knife in a cool way, you know, with a, a, a nice, durable, last, the rest of your life sheath system. So anyway, you can take this tech lock off and attach a molly lock clip to this plate right here. So I made a plate out of the the diamond hone holder. This is where the ferro rod goes. I'm waiting for the Santo compasses. This is his silent hero. Great retention. It's got combat scallops in it so you can get a nearly full grip on that knife. At the very least, I make it so that you can get more of your hand on that handle. Um, so there, there's that one. Same uh, wax impregnated cowhide, stainless steel posts, tabby dangler. This one is, this one actually made by Zach. Zach made this. And I'm pretty impressed with it because he's, he's getting real good. I'm kind of getting jealous. I mean, great retention, no rattle. This is for Colin Thomas. I'm pretty sure he lives in Great Britain. So, Colin, here's your sheath system. Hawk light assembly in scout carry, you know, cross draw carry. So, it's in 45 degree cross draw right now. You can reconfigure it for a couple other different configurations. This is set up for Baldrick carry only. It does not have a tabby dangler leather loop. He didn't want one. So clip into here, clip into here, or clip both of your clips into here and carry it vertically Baldrick carry. There it is. 
Got a diamond hone on the side. This is um, Cryptek Raider and black carbon fiber. So the Raider is a, a, like a dark gray and light gray pattern. It's pretty cool looking. I think it's neat. I like the color. Those Cryptek, I like those Cryptek patterns. I just, they're neat. They're cool, you know. And I tell you, this, this Kydex, right, is just as tough as any other Kydex in the same thickness. There's no difference. It's tough. Kydex is tough. All right, that's for the Rat 5. I want to show you this knife. I have two of these from CFK. Now, I got probably 10 sheaths going out to CFK next week. They sent me about, I don't know, 30 knives last month. We're slowly getting them done. We got 10 more going out next week. Um, I can't really say a lot about these knives and where they're going, but you're going to see these knives and the sheaths that cover them that cover them in the future on TV. So <laughs> this is going to be pretty cool. This is uh, the IPAC Survival CFK. It's just a giant bushcrafter chopper. D2 tool steel, uh, gray and black micarta scales, generous handle, very comfortable, 90 degree spine, very nice. The Working Man's Knife Company. CFK is the Working Man's Knife Company. You can get a nice knife from CFK for not a lot of money. Okay, that's about it right now. Um, this is Doug Wilson. For Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.